Hello, friends. Uh, this is Matt Greer. I'm the music director at St. John's United Methodist Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And um, we are uh, this Sunday having the second of our 2023-24 Music at St. John's concert series. We've got a great lineup for the whole thing. But we're especially excited about this Sunday's concert because it involves a couple of good friends and brilliant musicians. Javi and Alexis Corbin, um, who we asked to put together a program just for the series, and that is coming up this Sunday at two o'clock. And they are here to just kind of chat about the program. So I'm going to bring them in one at a time. There's Alexis Corbin. There's Javi Corbin. You're both here. Hi. Hey. How's it going? Terrific. Yes. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. As you can see, um, I'm here at my day job here at Albuquerque Academy. Right. Um, so you're in the band room? I actually am in one of the practice rooms because there's a guitar class happening in the band room. Oh, currently. okay. Nice. And I've and got my tie on because we got uh, a concert tonight, jazz band concert. So, Okay, awesome. And Alexis, you look like you were in your workplace. I am as well in the studios at KHFM. Very cool. Well, I'm in my office too. So I guess we're all in. This really is just like a Zoom is what we're doing. Just another meeting. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I'm so excited that you guys said yes to putting a concert together. Um, and I I think, Alexis, I just asked you if you would talk to your fantastic husband and if you guys would think about putting together a concert that involved friends. And I honestly didn't know what you were going to come up with, but what you've come up with is pretty exciting. So kind of tell us how you decided to include the people you included. Yeah, I don't think we knew what we were going to come up with either. <laughs> but uh, we do have some pretty cool friends. And drawing on that, um, we there's there's this instrument that's only in town for for a limited amount of time, and we thought it would be really fun to get to uh, to present a concert on on this particular instrument. So I'll I'll start there maybe just to say that um, this whole concert is being presented on, or mostly the concert is being presented on an instrument that was created by Lou Harrison, the composer. And um, and there are four of these in existence in the entire world, and one is actually here in town, and only until uh, like through next summer. So we thought one more chance to to play on that would be a great a great idea. So. And what is the instrument called? Yeah, it is called. Well, Lou Harrison called it uh, the American Gamelon, and he called okay. it that when he didn't actually know a lot about Indonesian gamelan. Over the years, it has gotten the nickname Old Granddad. And uh, they called it Old Granddad because they were moving it around. It got really beat up and they just started calling it Old Granddad. And then it got so beat up, they needed a second one and then a third and then a fourth. And so we we're actually playing on Old Granddad number four. Gotcha. So, yeah, when you told me about this, two things. I didn't quite know what to expect as far as what the instrument was going to look like. And it's actually, it's one instrument, but it's like in a bunch of different sections, right? Yes. Yeah, we've got uh, two soprano voices, two alto voices, um, a baritone, and a and this amazing bass uh, that stands about six feet tall. And uh, Alan Zimmerman, the owner of the instruments and actually the um, bass player, uh, he's a pretty tall guy, and he has to stand on a riser in order to play it. Uh, so it's really, really spectacular. Um, really beautiful instruments. They're beautiful looking, but they're also just amazing. I mean, technically what they are, are metallophones. Um, mm. And we're playing uh, the sopranos and altos are both different sizes of tuned conduit, like metal conduit that you would see, you know, holding electrical wiring and stuff like that in a building. Um, but what he has done is suspended those and given them resonators and tuned them in um, just intonation, D just intonation. Uh, so it's really, really spectacular uh, and beautiful sounding. And uh, you wouldn't think that pipes would sound like beautiful bells like they do. Um, and then the baritone and bass voices are really large plates of aluminum. And mm. again, the, the resonators are so tall, about six feet tall for the lowest A that we're playing. Um, it's really spectacular. And another really exciting thing for me is when we had rehearsal uh, there at the at the church, um, uh, it was really neat to hear those bass frequencies filling the room uh, because a lot of the spaces we have played it before aren't quite uh, the same dimensions. And to have that mm. really large space for that bass 
um, those bass tones to fill up. It's just an amazing experience. So uh, it's going to be a pretty special thing. And again, as Alexa said, this instrument, there are very few of them in the world. And uh, to get a chance to hear these instruments being played is a really special opportunity, I think. Very cool. Um, gamelan is a tradition. I mean, I've heard that word, and I think I have a basic understanding of what it means. But can can one of you talk about the tradition that that comes out of? Well, I think neither of us are are experts in it for sure. But um, but I think uh, the thing that would be true to the gamelan tradition is that there'd be many people playing um, what would be collectively what would collectively what would look like a bunch of different instruments, but would collectively be one instrument. And in fact, one of the pieces that we're playing um, called Kinong was originally written by a gamelan expert for gamelan instruments. And then she adapted it to these specific old granddad instruments. Um, so, yeah, a lot of times metal instruments, although there was a stone gamelan as well. Um, mm. And then their patterns are often really uh, rhythmic. Maybe individually the parts might be simple, um, but then together they layer into more more complex um, rhythms and harmonies, I guess. Is that, Javi, how would you describe it? Yeah, I would I would say they'd be paired together. One person's playing one beat, the next person next to them or sometimes across from them or even sitting next to them is playing the opposite beat. And you're chasing each other melodically, at least mm. the gamelan, the actual real Indonesian gamelan that I played, that's exactly what I was doing. I was chasing someone. <laughs> <laughs> musically speaking. So, wow. And there's a little bit of that happening um, with with some of the material that we'll be playing on Sunday. So you mentioned this piece by Jody Diamond, and I have a little video clip of that. So why don't we go to that? Um, tell us a little bit about this piece. So this is actually what begins the program. And um, what's really, I think, been fun for us is we're all going to be standing, when we play this, we're all standing around one instrument, um, but it's something that sort of builds up rhythmically. You'll hear the different um, the different tones sort of blending and creating beats between the, the uh -huh. different notes that different people are playing. So everybody has one or two that they're, that they're responsible for, but it combines into something much bigger. Okay, cool. So I'm going to play, it's called Kanong, is that right? Kanong, yes. Okay, yeah. I'm going to play just the last couple of minutes of this particular um, performance that Alexis sent. So this is Jody Diamond, enjoy. Very cool. Um, and so you're playing that piece, but of course it's going to look much different on Sunday, isn't it? 
It will. Right. Yeah, we'll all be standing around one of the set of tenor bells. Um, so some long pipes, probably like uh -huh. uh, maybe two and a half to one and a half feet long and all arranged on a frame. And so we'll all we've all chosen two pitches. And uh, it's amazing how it, it's interesting hearing that set on tuned gongs uh, as opposed to the um, conduit that we'll be playing. So hmm. you mentioned um, Lou Harrison was the the inventor of the American gamelan. Am I right about that? Yes. Yeah. And that's one of the big pieces you're playing on Sunday, right? Oh, yeah. A piece of his. Right, right. So we will actually we'll have two Lou Harrison pieces on the program, one that he wrote for a percussionist, Anthony Cerrone. And then the big um, piece at the end of the program is his suite for violin and American gamelan. And the violinist is David Felberg. We've gotten to play this with him a couple of times and it's gorgeous. He's amazing. And it's a it's a really cool piece. Um, something that um, Lou Harrison, you know, he creates this whole new instrument for it. He's thinking about other cultures and, you know, with these otherworldly sounds, but he also draws from these really old uh, forms like the estampi and the chacon. So, um, so he's kind of, he's in a lot of different places with this piece. <laughs> Very cool. Um, and what else on the program? Uh, we'll be doing a uh, work um, that, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, the composer uh, has chosen a bunch of um, tempos uh, for us to perform, and we are sticking exactly with our tempo and playing um, bell-like instruments, uh, all at different tempos, all at different times, uh, as an accompaniment to a work, uh, a piece being performed by Judy Gordon on piano. Um, but it's really interesting. It's not your usual piano, it is prepared piano. So she has some elevator bolts uh, carefully placed in between the strings, which gets this really percussive, um, unique tone. Uh, there's a couple of bicycle inner tube uh, pieces of rubber slid between some of the strings. So you get a really percussive effect, almost like a wood block. Uh, so she is playing this piece and we are accompanying her all in different tempos all at the same mm. time. And it's really, really, I find it really, really interesting. So. And there's a world premiere, right? Oh yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Glass. Do you want to talk about sheet of glass? Avi? No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that, that's the world premiere. It's a new piece by Ryan Meyer. He is in Boston. Actually, Jody Diamond uh, is also in Boston. Both of them are connected to MIT where the instruments that we're playing used to live. Mm. And um, and so Ryan Meyer was actually someone that, uh, one of the percussionists that we mentioned, Alan Zimmerman, um, he met Ryan Meyer while he was picking up these instruments in Boston. And Ryan was just sort of, he's a percussionist there. He was helping move the equipment. And then he said, hey, I've got a piece I'm working on. And uh, so we'll be, the, we'll be the first to perform it, but it's very cool. And, um, and uh, really interesting, I think kind of an exciting piece. It's really rhythmic and, and a little hard and, <laughs> and really <laughs> fits together. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to getting to present that for the first time. Excellent. Um, so just a couple of things I'm, I am curious about because I don't know that we've known each other for a long time, but I honestly don't know the answer to some of these questions. First of all, I'm interested from each of you, how did you, how did you get attracted to percussion? Uh, in the first place? And were there other instruments that you played or was it kind of always about percussion? You well, start? so for me, I, uh, I, I, what I remember is that when I was eight years old, my cousin um, had been playing the drums and gave it up. He was, he was one of those kids that would start something and then you move on to something else pretty quickly at the time. Um, and so I was given a drum set and I said, okay, that sounds good. And started playing in the school band and, um, just never, never looked back. I guess I tried to play trumpet for a summer. That was very, very for bad. A summer. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Javi, what about you? Uh, my family, at least my parents could carry a tune, but both my sisters were in choir, uh, and both studied piano. And then um, in fourth grade, my oldest sister, Deanna, who is a longtime music educator here in New Mexico, um, 
and retired now uh, from choir teaching. But anyways, uh, she was asked to play drums in the school band because uh, they needed a drummer and someone who could read music. And so she uh, convinced my parents to buy her a drum. And so when I was growing up, there was always this drum laying around the house. And I didn't really think much about it when in fourth grade at my school, they said, we're starting a band. And and so I joined as a percussionist and went through middle school and high school and did the marching band and all of that. And, and um, I also sang in choir uh, starting in third grade. And uh, so in high school, I did a lot of singing and playing and performing in musicals and stuff like that. And uh, my sisters, again, had gone to UNM and uh, I, you know, didn't think much about it that I was going to audition for some scholarships. And I got scholarships to sing in uh, to be a vocal major with Brad Ellingbo uh, as my um, voice teacher and then Christopher Schultes as my percussion teacher with an emphasis in music education. Uh, so that's what I did in college, uh, sang and played percussion. Um, and then Alexis and I met uh, through a friend, uh, actually through my 21st century heavy metal avant-garde vaudeville band, Skoombog. And like you uh, we were playing... Oh, you know, it's a common story. Uh, well, I play rock and roll xylophone, yeah, <laughs> timpani, uh, in a rock band, of course. When you wheel those things into a bar, that's always you know eye catching. People want to stick I'll around, bet. hear what yeah. in the world is the music going to be. But we're playing in Phoenix, and that's where I met Alexis. And then we we went to a, a percussion percussion convention, and we um, didn't know each one was attending, and and we saw each other, and and. Went to lunch one day and the rest is history. Oh, and then she came out and played with Skoombog uh, on February 2nd, 1997. And the rest is history. So, If anyone remembers the fat chance, yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that how you oh, remember yes. it, Alexis? Did he miss right anything? I mean, I, I could add. <laughs> <laughs> I could add that when we first met, uh, we, didn't, we didn't get along. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and I think I, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Shall we? Yeah. So Javi was trying to date Go my ahead. friend, and oh. um, and and then I made fun of him. He said his dad was a, a rocket scientist, and I said, "And your mom's a brain surgeon." And so we got off <laughs> uh, really well to start out, but it, we patched it, patched it up over time. <laughs> He's not a oh, brain that's surgeon. Great. Yeah, he's a very smart woman, but yeah. And then all these years later, this Sunday is going to be the pinnacle of your careers uh, playing together. I have have no doubt. So I'm Absolutely, so happy yeah. to be so happy to be in, you know, have had a hand in bringing you together for that this Sunday. Um, um, yeah, I want to mention after myself. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just saying we've never had a concert named after ourselves. So. Oh, wow. Oh, this is great. Yeah, uh, that's that's awesome. Um, you and notice I listed your names alphabetically. <laughs> I assumed. Yeah. Yeah, that was totally it. So joining Javi and Alexis this Sunday are Douglas Cardwell, Jeff Cornelius, Ben Irons, and Alan Zimmerman on percussion. And they're also joined by pianist Judith Gordon and violinist David Felberg. And it's going to be fantastic. This Sunday at two o'clock, St. John's United Methodist Church uh, in Albuquerque, also available by live stream. And uh, there's no admission charge. Free will offering will be received on the way out. So we hope we have a fantastic audience for this. Javi and Alexis, thank you for joining me to talk about this today. And I can't wait to hear the concert. Thanks for having us, Matt. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.